Welcome to episode 3 of Millionaire Starts From Scratch, a series where I started from scratch and I'm working on making enough money for a down payment on a rental property by committing different types of insurance fraud. Just kidding, different types of entrepreneurial ventures. Throughout the last two episodes, we've now built up our total balance to $3,043, which we are going to use in this video to hopefully make some major money moves. Let's get into it. So at this point, three grand, we got some decent cheese here and with such cheese comes a lot of opportunity. You could say things are getting pretty serious. I really had to put in a lot of thought as to what we can get into next because we're already getting into the bigger leagues in terms of our balance here. So doing something that would only make us $20, $30 would almost seem like a step backwards. We needed something bigger. And I think the answer to our dilemma is we need to partake in a high ticket flip, buy something expensive and resell it, hopefully making a profit in the four figures. And what better way to do that than with a vehicle? That's right. Watch out, Doug DeMero. We're stepping on your toes and getting into the car biz. <laughs> oh, that's a great one. With three grand, we could probably get into some older high mileage Hondas and Toyotas that would be good as daily drivers, try to lowball and find an undervalued one and flip that. But I, I want to do something more interesting. I've been doing a lot of Craigslist searching. Scanning. <laughs> Control. And actually found something that could have some potential. This 1995 BMW 5 Series. It says E30 in the title. I think that's cap. Unless they did an engine swap, which I doubt. But probably put that in there just for SEO purposes. I think if it runs good and we manage to haggle down and get it for closer to 1000 maybe 1250 we could then clean it up, do a little detailing, take some mad aesthetic pictures, write out a beautiful, captivating description, and sell this sucker for maybe around 3000 depending on how it runs. So I agreed to meet up with this fella the following day, pulled up to our meetup location 30 minutes away from me, mad excited, cash in hand, ready to go, but the other guy just never showed. He wasn't responding to my texts, would not pick up my calls, so I waited there for like 40 minutes and eventually just had to bite the bullet and fold. Congratulations, you played yourself. Been a couple of days, I've now mentally recovered from just being absolutely finessed and stood up with that BMW. I've been doing some more searching and I think we might have another potential flip here. It's this 1982 Mercedes-Benz 300D. Clean title, the description says it runs good. It's a diesel, so we won't have to pass smog, which is a huge thing, especially when you're dealing with these older cars. I know the listing says 3,500, but I hit the person up. They're lenient on the price and are willing to let it go for three. I'm hoping to even be a shrewd negotiator on the spot and get it even lower than that but we'll see what happens this bad boy is two hours away from me though so if we get stood up two hours away I, I don't know if I'll recover from that but again we'll see what happens tomorrow morning outside in an AMG we really got him. Three bands for the 300D. The hype levels right now are at like a peak that they've been throughout this whole series. Unfortunately, couldn't get the price lower than three, but I think even at three grand, this is a pretty good deal. This car hasn't been driven in a while, so it's a little rough around the edges, but it's what's on the inside that matters. And mechanically, I think this car is golden. Now, we're gonna put this particular car to the ultimate test and see if I can make it home, which is two hours away, without breaking down. We made it back in one piece without even having to pull over once. I think we have a good whip on our hands here. Now, problem is we only have 40 bucks left on our total balance. I still need to register it, which is going to be like a couple hundred dollars at least. I want to replace um, just a few of the filters, the oil to get it up and running even smoother. So to comfortably cover all of that, we probably need like another four to five hundred dollars that we don't have. <laughs> Tell me why I feel like a high schooler right now who just got an absolutely clapped Miata and doesn't have money to fix it. Each one of these stickers adds five horsepower, so I'll let you do the math. There is nothing new under the sun oh man we need like 500 bucks i think i know what we have to do i just i don't know if i have it in me to do it it's looking like we're gonna have to run up another moving job hop back into the moving hustle if you remember from last episode that ended up resulting in me hopping on a 24-hour shift doing a move from sacramento california to boise idaho but we're strapped for cash here and i don't really see a better option Unless, no, that's illegal. We're, we're, we're gonna do the moving. I'm gonna once again hit up the king of Toronto, AKA Drazy Go Crazy. And the next time you'll see me will likely be very early in the morning. <laughs> Here we go again. Man, 
Hands is on his phone, huh? <laughs> Caught red-handed, bro. What was that? Are we slacking yeah, or what? Yeah, we, yeah, we still have availability today. Uh, you gotta do a little scream or something to warm up the lungs. Woo! Woo! And we're back with the puppeteer, the overseer of many things, Mr. Drazy. Can you please? Y'all already know how it is. <laughs> So can you please do the honors and break down the move talk a little bit about location and what we're doing the move that we are in the middle of right now Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we got two moves into one truck last time. It was one truck one move this time We finessed two moves two different people convinced it. No, we you finessed two no, people. no, 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 no Hold up. Wait a minute We're, not, we didn't finesse Listen, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna rephrase that. No, we didn't finesse him We convinced them with a little bit of manipulation. And <laughs> we cut him a break Okay and we Can convinced them that. to hop on with another customer for a slightly discounted price. So essentially there was two separate clients that were doing almost the same exact move. So we're loading it all up into one truck. So we're going to get paid double for essentially the same amount of work. Yeah, exactly. Exactly right. So these are going from NorCal to SoCal. So about the same, you know, same distance haul. You know, same everything, I'd say just a bigger truck, and we have two clients instead of one. Okay, so we loaded up the two clients, we have all of their stuff in the back, and we're about an hour and a half into the driver, so we got Give like take, seven yeah, to go. We, yeah, yeah, we, we barely scratched the surface, so we got a haul. All right, let's get some grub and let's get going. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, tell them what we got, tell them what we got. Tell, oh, tell them what we hey, got. Hey, just to do a little flex of Ronies. Hey. What am I eating? Can y'all smell this? Hold up. I'm gonna tell that you can run the same thing for two days. You seem a little groggy, bro. Nah, I ain't right. groggy. <laughs> okay, we just unloaded the second load. Not gonna lie, going into this, I was kind of mentally preparing myself for just another 24 hour shift like last time, but it's looking like a double 24 hour shift this time. I mean, oh. don't let Osha hear about this one, Sheesh. but that's on the low low. <laughs> now let's talk business. I'm gonna hop into your shoes here. Uh, how much did we get paid for each of the loads? We're looking at roughly 2200 per load. Okay. So net total is 4400 right? Mm-hmm. Expenses, truck, 750 you pay yeah. a helper. That's rent and gas, right? Correct. Okay. Yeah, rent and gas mm -hmm. and the two-day you know period we're taking the truck. Um, and then I'd say an additional 450 to 500 for a helper. So I'd say give or take, we're looking at right around $1,200 for expenses. Uh -huh. We do some quick maths here. 1200 minus 44. I, I know it. I'm just testing you. I mean, <laughs> I mean, last time you were walking with the number. Right? We're looking at 3200. 3200. Okay, that's hot. Yeah. Oh, that's hot. <laughs> 2:30 a.m. Two days later, and that is a wrap on this moving job. We did it! After two days of straight grinding and hustling, we came up with the money and can now do a number of things. First off, register the car and pay taxes on it, which I think is gonna run us just around $350. Then I'm gonna order a fuel filter, I think this is called a little fuel filter pump, an air filter, an oil filter, as well as two of these alternator belts. Once that comes in, we'll go ahead and replace the parts and then go crazy with some detailing on the outside and on the inside. So I'll go ahead and order these parts and I'll see you guys when they come in.
So I cleaned the car up, replaced some filters, the oil, took some nice photos of it, and here's how the listing would kind of look like. I'd pop these photos in there, drop the word immaculate a few times, but we have an issue with selling the car. A few months ago, I per my company purchased a company vehicle and it took about three months for the title which is the official document saying that the car is mine to come in the mail the delays are probably due to the rona but point is i can't sell the car until the title comes in for it and i don't want to have this challenge be at a standstill for like three months while we wait for it so instead of selling it, I'm thinking I'm going to talk to some car flippers and have them give me an honest number as to what I could realistically sell it for. I feel like that's a pretty fair solution. going to get a couple opinions. First up, Victor, the man, the myth, the legend from the first episode who got us into the Christmas lights hanging business actually also flips cars. He buys them off an auction website, fixes them up and sells them, has like three flips, I believe, standing in his driveway as we speak. So I want to first see what he has to say. Hypothetically, I come out the car, you're already going crazy with it, fixing it, something up under the car. Reality TV style would make mm -hmm. you look pretty legit. All right, all right, you so did, you down? Right. Hey, good morning, Victor. Oh, hey, morning. <laughs> so Vic, as an avid car flipper, and after taking this whip out on some twisties and giving it a good gander, is that a word? Gander? Yeah, Gandalf. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Bot. <laughs> no more jokes. I won't say any more. The car's in pretty good condition. Uh, it runs really well. Brakes good. All the major mechanical themes are really good about it. Interior and exterior, as far as like looks, uh, like paint and interior, like seating and everything, it's all pretty good. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. Like, I would say it's better than most of the stuff that's out there. Okay, and if you had to put a number on that, what what would you say? I would say if someone's looking for this, like, exact setup, like a blue blue paint color with the blue interior, you can probably get, like, five out of it. But mm -hmm. to, like, the everyday buyer, just someone that's looking for a old Mercedes diesel, you could probably get probably, like, 45. 45? Fairly, fairly quickly, yeah. That's like a realistic number. I would list it within a month. It'd be sold type of deal. Yeah, I think so. And then we'll also talk to my homie Tim from the Foreign Builds YouTube channel. These guys focus on flipping cars. They've done Lambos, sports cars, G-Wagons, you name it. They definitely know a thing or two about evaluating vehicles. <laughs> So we are here with the CEO of all of automotive content on YouTube, Tim. What is going on, guys? The foreign builds. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and take this car for a little whip ski, have yeah. you take a look at it, and possibly get a little appraisal going. For sure. Let's do it. All right. Which key is it? Uh, it's the purple one. Oh, it's the purple one? What is the red one for? Sport mode? <laughs> you naughty, naughty. You teasing me. <laughs> Between four to five grand. 45 grand yeah a good and i'm super picky about my uh -huh. cars like this is this is minor stuff but i mean honestly it's a good price especially with these cars their engines last 600k bulletproof that's car. a lot these cars these engines are bulletproof so we're talking four to five four to five that's what i would appraise it at so both appraisals were around the same kind of range. However, I want to be as realistic as possible. So we'll go with the lower end of the range, which was $4,500. Meaning when you count up the registration and miscellaneous parts, we made around $1,000 on this flip. Bringing our new total balance to... $7,268. Ended up making more money with the moving hustle we did to get parts for the car than we did with actual flip. So... Hey, it really is about the journey, not the destination. But anyways, made some good progress in this episode. Thank you for watching. Hope you have an amazing, delightful rest of your day. Peace.